Hello YouTubers and welcome back to my channel Master That English where we understand, analyze and interpret the important texts that may be a part of your English curriculum. Our topic for today is a continuation of the last module that we had on the poet Tom Maurice and this poem is a very personal one which is called Letter to My Mother. So without further ado, let's quickly begin. So get your pens and notepads ready as always because here we go. All right, so the title of the poem itself says Letter to My Mother. This is a very personal note, uh, autobiographical poem that Dom Maurice has written and it gives a lot of aspects, a lot of things that were there in his mind, the things that he feels because he has matured as a poet and as a result of which this poem definitely does represent the feelings as a mature poet. What is that he is really feeling in context to his mother because now he is established as a poet. So what is he thinking and what are the things that are going on in his mind in context to his close bond with his mother? This is what we will get to see in this particular poem. So before we begin, it's very important to firstly read the poem and get a feel of what are these aspects on the surface level. So let's just begin by reading the whole poem once. Letter to my mother. I address you only, my lonely mother, where seven islands squat in a filthy sea, you say your rosary. The seven hills of Rome loom daily over the deaths or the weepers in the bazaar, equally without hope, in the shape of your home, which was also on a hill. My small, prosperous grandfather built a house there. He died mourned by you, from me, farther away, even than Rome. Holy he wrote to heaven, he would be ashamed of me, who attend to no virgins. You are not ashamed. In the corroding sun you sit alone with your church, and the memory of the sun you scarcely ever seen. You pray he may spread for the arms of the blue wife, God raped in an orchard. You do not understand me. I am tidying my life in this cold, tidy country. I am filling my small shelf with my books. If you should find me crying as often as when I was child, you will know I have reason to. I was ashamed of myself since I was ashamed of you. Your eyes are not mine. When I last looked in them, I saw my country, a defeated dream, hiding itself in prayers, a population of corpses, of burnt bodies like cluttered the slow deep rivers of bodies stored into earth quickly before they stank or cooked by the sun for vultures on modern tar. You pray. You do not notice the corpses around you. Sorrow has stopped your eye. Your dream is desolate. It calls me every day, but I cannot enter it. You know I will not return. Forgive me for my trespasses. By reading these lines, we can notice that there are a lot of personal insights that he has provided that are quite complex and that are providing a wide range of justification, clarification, and also representing a sort of understanding, his matured understanding about the manner in which his mother has gone through a lot of issues and problems. Let us understand these perspectives as we paraphrase it line by line. So let's begin with the first four lines where he's saying that he is being direct in the first two lines. If you notice that, that he is saying that I am only addressing one person in this poem, which is only my mother. I am not trying to talk about any other individual but her. But the manner in which he says the next, in the next line, that is the second line, my lonely mother. Lonely mother here is a transferred epithet. Through the transferred epithet, we can understand that he is not only trying to represent her, he is not only addressing her, but he is also telling about the state, her mental state of mind and the present situation in which she is living her life, which is without any companionship, without anybody to take care of her. She is all alone. Wherever she is, she is all alone and there is nobody to take care of her, which is the reason why the transferred epithet has been used to tell her her present state or situations that in the manner in which she is living her life today. In the present and then he says that where seven islands squat in a filthy sea 
Now, even the place that she's staying in, this is actually showing a kind of similarity between the state of the mother and the state of the place, which is Bombay. Bombay here has been represented by the cultural history of it, the manner in which it was formed. It is believed that Bombay was actually formed by the uniting of seven islands. These seven islands include the Isle of Bombay, Kolaba, Old Women's Island, Mahim, Mazagao, Parel, and Worli. So just like this place which has been constructed long back and in such a great form, what is happening is that this place is also ignored because what you notice is that the sea, that is the, the sea, the place, that ocean that is in front of it is definitely polluted by the manner in which people are not being able to maintain it. They're not concerned. They're not, they do not care about the ecological needs of the place. So they are ignoring the place just like the family members have ignored the mother. Even the place seems to be ignored by the people, which is the reason why the place and the mother have been represented in a very, very sad, with a very sad positioning because both of them are feeling isolated. Even the place is feeling neglected. And that neglect is represented by the first four lines, the neglect of the place and the neglect of the mother in the place where she's staying at present, which is Bombay. So after this, let's move on with the next lines and try to understand the perspective here. Now in the next line, he is actually talking about, you say your rosary, the seven hills of Rome, loom daily over the deaths and the weepers in the bazaar, equally without hope. He is representing to the act that the mother is performing in the present day life, which is rosary. Rosary here is, she's definitely involved in the practice of prayers, actions that are involving her reverence to God. That is what she's doing in her mental state of mind. She is undergoing a mental psychological problem and it is believed that the psychological problem that Tom Maurice's mother actually had was that was um, she was definitely in the disease or in the problem that she was having. She was she had become more more involved in religious practices. So this is the reason why then he now is telling her present state of affairs in which she is working. That is, she is definitely using religion. She is praying. And the seven hills of Rome loom daily over the deaths. Now here again, a historical place has been represented, Rome. That is an ancient city that is again carrying a lot of heritage. But what is Dom Maurice trying to say is that in every historical place, even though a place has a lot of legend and a lot of things involved with it, there is also some sad notes that are there in every place. This legendary place, Rome, also had a lot of things involved with it. It's not just the heritage and not just the culture that is important, but there are a lot of tragedies that can take place in any well-known, reputed place or ancient place like Rome, which is, that is the reason why in the next line he talks about the looms daily over the deaths or the weepers of the bazaar equally without hope. That is, he's trying to say that there are a lot of other tragic events that also happen in every legendary place. There are some sad notes of people dying. There are also some sad notes of people going through depression in, as based on the hurdles and the difficulties that they face. And that is the reason why sometimes hope also fails. Sometimes the optimism also fails in individuals, even in legendary countries. And he is trying to represent this legendary country or this legendary place to the place of his native place where his house is actually constructed and you can notice this reference is actually represented he's saying which was also on a hill he's saying this place that is this legendary place uh, he's trying to bridge a parallel between the place and his place that is Rome and his own place native place that the mother is residing is also like home it is also like a historical place that has been constructed who has constructed this place he is talking about these people in the next line equally without in the shape of your home which was also on a hill so this place that the place where the mother is actually residing it is also like a legendary place because it has been constructed long back just like rome was constructed long back or back in the age it and it has a legend so he also believes that the place that the mother was staying it also has a legend it is a place which also had a lot of history attached to it which is the reason why he says you also are having a legend to the place that you were staying in, 
my small prosperous grandfather built a house there so he's saying that even our house was actually built by the contribution of your father that is his maternal grandfather and the house was built there he died mourned by you from me father even from rome so now he is actually trying to say just like the tragedy took place in rome people died there was a bad sad history similarly there was a sad note of loss that even our legendary house went through which was the death of the close associates and these close associates are actually the people here is in specifically represented in the form of the grandfather who was actually responsible for constructing the house he is no longer there just like in rome has undergone a lot of deaths it has undergone a lot of loss even this house legendary house in which the mother is now residing which is actually constructed by her own father is also has also undergone loss and that loss is that is what he's saying that loss is obviously the loss of his grandfather and he is missed by both of them that is by don morris and by his mother thereafter he says that he died mourned by you from me father away from rome holy he rode to heaven he would have been ashamed of me who attend to no virgins so now what is interesting here is he is actually representing the fact in which he he feels that his grandfather would have been very very um, sad about the things that don morris is not able to follow as a christian because his religion he is a catholic so it is believed that a good catholic is somebody whenever you are a good when you basically having a good belief towards your religion you would definitely go to the church and you would try to be at least give yourself some service to the god and you would definitely want to give devotion to the god and that is only when you are going to the church and providing your thanks to him and reverence to him by going to the church and the virgin that is represented who attend to no virgins that means don morris is somebody who was never able to give time to that devotion to god the mother here this is an allusion that is used christian allusion that is used to mother mary who has been referred as the virgin no virgins that means he is not going to the church and providing his devotion to god that in a way he is actually trying to hint that he is very very preoccupied with his work that he is not able to do the common things that every person in his family would do that his grandfather would do and his mother is still doing that is providing devotion to god and he feels this is something that every individual in his family is going to feel bad about that he is not giving time to the simple things in life which is providing devotion to god this is something which is very very important which is very necessary and he knows that his grandfather is going to be ashamed of this thing that he is not doing his religion religious obligation that every individual should do and out of free will out of not out of pressure but something that he should do as a reverence because Domoris what he is trying to say here is that i am so preoccupied that i am not able to do these things and i'm very sorry for it i'm feeling ashamed because i know that the people who have dead would also have felt the same way as i'm feeling just now that is not being able to perform my religious duty of even providing service to god and then he says in the corroding sun you sit alone with your church you are not ashamed he says so you are not ashamed in the sense the mother is in a way magnanimous where his family members have may may have criticized him his mother is very magnanimous she has no kind of qualms regarding the very fact that the son is not being able to do these simple things in life she she can maybe understand the very thing that he is occupied with his life because tom morris from a very young age was traveling out so maybe the mother has a clear understanding of the things that his her son is very busy he is very preoccupied with his life and that is the reason why he says you are not ashamed in the corroding sun you sit with your church and the memory of the sun you have scarcely ever seen that means you are so well adapted to the fact you are so well uh, tuned you you are not really disturbed by the notion that you are not getting to see your son it almost seems like you really have a big heart because you're not being selfish enough to keep your son with you and you're allowing your son to do things that he really wants to do which is something that i really appreciate about you you're not really ashamed you're never saying anything to me you're never criticizing me 
in the present, which is something that I would always appreciate about you. This is the thing that he appreciates about her, that he is not critic she is not criticizing him the way the family members would have done had they been there, like the grandfather would have been there, he was he would have definitely criticized him. But he says that you are very, very calmly providing your devotion to God. You're sitting in the church and you're providing your devotion to God without having any problem about the fact that I'm not able to do the things that are required for me to do, that I should be doing as an individual. So this is something that he's appreciating about her in the lines. And um, she is completely preoccupied with her own life. And after this, this is a very interesting note of the mother's magnanimity because not only is she accepting the fact that he can go out and do things, whatever he wants to do, but you can notice that what he says is that you you have scarcely ever seen, you pray he may be spread for the arms of a blue life, God raped in an orchard. Now the blue wife here is representing the fact, again is a transfer epithet, which is representing an English woman. When we studied about Dom Maurice, we got to know that Dom Maurice first wife was actually an English woman. He, he went to England and this is the time when he is he's actually in England. So he's trying to say that you're so magnanimous that you are not having any problem. You are actually praying the God that even if I'm married to a English woman, that is not a problem for you. You are even in, you are not having any problems if I get married to somebody who is from some other country. In fact, you are hoping that I may grow as an individual, which is the reason why the third line of the illusion, the biblical illusion of the Garden of Eden has been represented where God draped in an orchard. He has represented this thought because this is the place, the Garden of Eden is the place where Adam and Eve matured as individual. Their innocence was lost. They matured as husband and wife because of the sin that they did. So she also wants that her son should mature now from being the very innocent self, even if it is with a foreigner. He doesn't, she really doesn't mind the very fact that he gets married to a person who is from some other country. What is important for him is that this lady he gets married to or whosoever comes in his life, he should be growing as an individual. He should mature up as an individual. That innocence should be lost and he should become a mature man with the passing of time, which is what is that God draped in an orchard actually alluding to. His innocence should be lost and he should become a mature man now. That is what he wants. He, she wants her son to grow as a person. But then in the next lines, what you notice is that he is actually representing a new perspective now, the things that maybe the mother is not able to understand. Even though she wants him to get married, there are certain things that she is still not able to understand, which is the reason now he starts with a different note. He says, you do not understand me. I am tidying my life in this cold, tidy country. I am filling my small shelf with my books. He says, these are not the things. Maybe Don Maurice here is trying to represent the fact, I don't want to get settled. This is not what is important for me. Getting married is not important for me. What is most important for me is to have a life of my own, to have an identity of my own. I'm tidying my life. That means he is actually trying to settle down professionally, financially. He's trying to settle down first in this cold, tidy country. Now again, this places that he is referring in the poem are always indirectly being referred. So this is definitely the cold and tidy country is a foreign country that is being alluded as Britain, where he was settled at that point of time. With my books, he wants to settle down. So he wants a small shelf. The small shelf here is representing the identity that he wants for himself. He wants to be a new person, a person that is having a life of his own, a place of his own, a name of his own. That is the reason why he is working, he is striving hard and that is the reason why he has gone out or to a different place. He has left his mother for this same reason and which is why he is saying, you do not understand that this is why I went out. I didn't go out to leave you abandoned but to actually make a place for myself to do something in life and have a place, an identity of my own. If you should find me crying as often as I was as a child, you will know I have a reason to. I am ashamed of myself because I was ashamed of you, as he says in the following lines. What he's trying to say is that I am going through a lot of emotional exhaustion. I am exhausted and my aggression of this frustration of not being able to get things 
is the reason why sometimes there are moments when I am I feel like crying. And this crying of this suffocation that I'm experiencing just now is very similar to that same emotional frame of mind that I had at the time when I was a child. Because as a child, Dom Maurice had seen his mother undergoing the mental psychic bouts that she was having. And he says, I felt very helpless back then also, looking at your state and the manner in which you would behave. I would not know what to do because as a child, he was not able to do anything for the manner in which the mother was behaving. He could not do much. And he says, that is how helpless I am feeling even today because I cannot really do much to work on my current state of affairs. And there are moments when I feel just, I feel the same aggression, I feel the same kind of anxiety as I experienced when I was a child. And I could not do anything for you because I always felt ashamed. Now here, you what you notice is that the mental disease has also been, he is also trying to state a new perspective. Like when you talk about mental diseases, there is a sort of stigma attached to it. People are often ashamed of acknowledging the fact that their family members has this particular problem. And maybe Tom Maurice was also going through this kind of embarrassment because of which he was still as a child. Again, he was not able to acknowledge the very fact that his mother was having this problem and that's the reason why he was not able to do much. So he is definitely trying to suggest that I am having a lot of problems now also. Don't, do not think that I am going out to settle down. I'm actually going out to make a world for my, this, myself, make a place for myself. And there are times when even today I have a lot of struggles and I do feel like crying. I do feel like go undergoing and venting out my feelings. Just like I felt like venting out my feelings when I was a young boy. Now we come to the final portion, which is very interesting. Because now, in a way, what Dom Maurice actually tries to do is that he tries to, in a way, justify and even tries to apologize for all that has happened. He is trying to reflect, in a way, he is trying to represent a very thing of um, the, th the reason why he did all this and has already been stated but now he will actually come to a more deeper perspective of trying to even ask for forgiveness which is the most important thing as a mature individual you need to accept things and you also need to move on so that maturity is represented in the final stroke so let's understand these lines now he says your eyes are not like mine when i last looked in them i saw my whole country a defeated dream hiding itself in prayers a population of corpses so he says he he's definitely reflecting on the fact now eyes over here represent they say that the eyes are a window to the soul so he knows he's saying i you need to understand that the way and the manner in which you see things and i see things are very different when i looked in them i saw a whole country a defeated dream that means he's trying to say that the manner in which the mother sees things around her are very dull her perception towards thing is very dull, which is the reason why uh, this is what he thinks is the perception of the mother. It is a defeated dream. That means he feels that whatever the way and the manner in which the mother thinks is not progressive, it is not serving any good, and she is delusioned because of her sickness. And he, in a way, there is a slight hint you can feel that maybe he is also trying to say this even for his country. He feels that people also in the society around that in which the mother was staying, again, a parallel between the mother and the motherland, that even the place in which he was staying, there were few people who f he feels were as delusional as his mother's state of mind, who were not allowing to do, they were not being able to do anything progressive. This is definitely not a critique on the cultural heritage, but he is actually trying to talk about the stigmas that are related in the social order, which are not allowing maybe the caste system or other wrong practices. Maybe these are the critiques on them. There may be a hint there, but that is what Dom Maurice is trying to say, that if you're delusioned, if you are only focusing on, if you're not having life, if you're not having energy, if you do not have a desire or wish to do something, if you don't have aspirations, you do become delusional and her mother is having no aspiration like even for a parent 
they do have aspirations that the child should do well in their life but the mother is not able to think in that perspective which is the reason why she's dull and Dom Maurice's eyes are very different he says my perceptions are different I'm not dull I have aspiration I have dreams I really want to do something in life my eyes are all about aspiring they are aiming for something very very huge and I, I wish if you could see things the way I am seeing things that is the reason why he's saying this perspective and then he says that I saw my whole country a defeated dream hiding itself in prayers a population of corpses of burnt bodies that cluttered the slow deep rivers of bodies stored in earth quickly before they stank and cooked by the sun for vultures on a modern tower. What you notice here is that he is actually representing the funeral rites of two different cultures that is the Hindu culture uh, where the funeral rites are performed by the burning of the body and then what has happened uh, what happens after that is that you immerse the remains of the or the ashes in the holy river and the next thing that happens is that um, he is representing the on the cooked the lines where you notice that cooked by the son of the vultures on a modern tower that is actually representing a Zoroastrian funeral that also takes place uh, where the body of the person who is dead is actually kept on the tower and what is believed is that the vultures come and feed on the remains of the body. Now the reason why he's representing this image of a funeral rite is mainly because he's trying to say that it is very important that when you in a way when a person dies it's very important to castrate yourself from that individual. There is an immediate practice involved where you castrate that individual from that activity that is happening or from your relation you need to do that and in every religion whatever culture you see that is a right that has to be done it is an immediate practice that has to be done you do something to perform the final um, in a way a kind of castration has to be performed to just end the relationship and move on and live with the memory of that person that is what is important. So Dom Maurice is also trying to represent this aspect of moving on, which he says that when a person is not able to understand you, you definitely have to move on. Because what happens is that when the thought process of two individuals do not match, you become a almost like a burden for that person. Like for instance, he says the burnt bodies, when the ashes of the bodies are thrown in the or immersed in the rivers, even though they're that practice has been happened but even the water body undergoes a sort of problem because it is almost like a weight that the water also has to carry so the flow of the water gets affected this is what happens everything that dies in a way it affects the natural order it disturbs it and disrupts it for a little while and that is when you feel that the, the need to re to form a sort of resignation from the thing is important the need to castrate it is very important and so that is the reason why in the final note he says, You pray, you do not notice the corpses around you. Sorrow has stopped your eye, your dream is desolate. So this is the parallel that he is trying to represent between his mother and the, the kind of thinking that she has, which is also like, like that of a dead person because she is not thinking with the vision and the, with the perspective of a person, a lively person or a normal person, human being. She's almost thinking like a dead individual, almost delusional. And that that serves no purpose. For Dom Maurice, this is almost like a dead thought with which the mother is living. And that is the reason why he calls your dream is very desolate. He says, your it has it serves no purpose. It's almost like it is dead. It requires a funeral of parting of just parting and moving on. Which is the reason why in the final notes, he is addressing that kind of departure, a kind of funeral that he also needs to perform in which he has to castrate himself from his mother. That is why he says, It calls me every day, but I cannot enter it. You know I will not return. Forgive me for my trespasses. This is a kind of forgiveness that he is asking from his mother because he feels that his relationship with his mother is in a way dead. He sees no future, just like in the dead in, during the funerals there is no purpose of building the connect between the body and the individuals around you cannot maintain that association similarly Dom Maurice now thinks he knows that he cannot establish it is almost a kind of 
resignation that Tom Maurice wants from his mother now because he knows that there is no way he can think of a future with his mother now. And that is the reason why, because this human weakness in him of not being able to connect with his mother in this present state of affairs is making him even feel guilty. And the guilt is represented because he's asking in the last line of this poem, he is asking for forgiveness. He's asking for pardon. He's saying that I'm really sorry I did all this and I am almost moving away from you, almost like as a dead person is left or departed with. I am doing the same thing, I know, and I'm very sorry for this. I, am, I, I ask for forgiveness and I hope you will forgive me for whatever I'm doing. But the thing is that I cannot share any emotional connect with you now. In a way, Tom Morris, even though there is a maturity of acceptance, he knows that his mother has done him a lot of good, but the mental sickness and all these things, it is complex. You cannot blame Tom Maurice for it because he as an individual has also gone through a lot of difficulties, whether it is his childhood difficulties or his mature difficulties. It is very different. We cannot judge him for that. But he is definitely trying to represent his maturity by accepting his limitations also by the end, which is showing that mature side of the poet. When you are accepting your mistake, when you are asking forgiveness, you are actually representing yourself as a mature poet. And this is the mature frame of mind that Dom Maurice is representing in this poem, in which he is being honest about his relationship. He's being honest about the things that he has been able to fulfill in his family relationships and the things that he has not been able to perform in the right way or he has not been able to tribute things in the right way, the things and the perspectives that he has ignored. He's being very honest in this poem, which is the beauty of the poem because when you are always being biased, you're always trying to represent the good things. But Dom Maurice in this poem is representing the good and the bad he is talking about his limitations to the things that he has been ignoring, which is providing, doing, performing the things, the rituals. He has not been able to do this. He is so occupied and he accepts that, which is the note of a modern man, which is what is happening today. Because even in today's life, everybody is so preoccupied. Sometimes people are not able to follow the norms and the traditions of the family, which is accepted. But what is important is acceptance and acknowledgement of that. Yes, I do agree that I have not been able to do it and I'm sorry. I know you're feeling bad about it. He accepts these things and he's saying it outright, which is what is the sign of a mature poet and a mature individual. This brings us to the final conclusion of the poem, which is the, the main aspect of accepting things for what they are. Even though there are limitations in every relationship, what is important for you is to be very honest about your present state of mind, which is what Dom Maurice is doing in this poem. He's being very honest about his present state of mind and he knows the things that he knows his limitations and he knows the level at which he can follow up a relationship, which is what is important. So this honesty makes the reader also realize that it's very important to accept relations and to be very honest about your thought process in any relationship, no matter how close it is, thereby maintaining a sort of respect to that relationship by being honest. And that beautiful thought brings us to the end of this lecture. I hope you enjoyed every bit of it as I enjoyed in paraphrasing each line to all of you who are listening to this lecture. Um, that's it. And I hope to meet you all of you very soon, another, another time with another lecture. Please do share and like it if you enjoy the lecture by the, till the end, because uh, it does really take a lot of time in paraphrasing and constructing the whole concept. And a little appreciation would really motivate me to do and make more content. This is something very interesting because I feel literature also needs to be shared with honesty in this manner so that we can all enjoy it all relish it and spread the poetic genius of artists who are bringing out such deep insights about creative works. So let's do that and let's share this and uh, please subscribe if you're new and I hope that I get to see you in my next lecture. So stay tuned. I'll meet you very soon another time with another lecture. Take care. Bye-bye.